Hi there, welcome back. We're going to have a look at another statistics video now. This one explores two-way tables. Two-way tables... Two-way tables are used to present data describing real-life situations mostly. And the information is presented in two-way tables that, and involves a comparison between two items, but each of them have two different options. So you'll see that in an example we've got here. This one compares people who play soccer or not, and people who play cricket or not. And having two items for each of those two uh, ideas uh, so kind of creates an intersection of maybe four different categories that people are in. So we have that uh, that idea there, and we have a certain number of people who fit those. I mean, we might do a survey of a school or a, a, sport, a, a group of uh, young young people, and uh, we could ask them, uh, do you play soccer, do you play cricket, or not? Um, and these are the combinations in this particular survey, and the numbers will obviously be different depending on what uh, which people you ask. So. Um, so you can see here, if we have a look at closely at these uh, these items, that there are 12 people here. If we just compared that, 12 people here who play soccer and also play cricket, play cricket and soccer. Now, if you have a look at uh, this lot here, 28 people play soccer. It's in that column, but they don't play cricket. Seven people here, they don't play soccer, but they do play cricket and these 15 people do not play soccer and do not play cricket so they don't play cricket or soccer so just carefully line up those and we can tell the story of the different numbers there and these are the sorts of questions we might get we might uh, be asked how many students altogether were surveyed so there's four different categories that people can fit in and there's numbers in each of them so really we could add up those numbers but it's handy to have some uh, uh, some extra totals anyway because some questions later on might ask us uh, to just uh, focus in on all the people who play soccer or don't play cricket or whatever and I'll show you how to do that in a minute so we can, it should be uh, it's wise to add an extra row and an extra column to the table and calculate some totals here so we've got the totals, now the total of the people who play soccer just uh, adds up the two, thing, two numbers above it. There are 40 people altogether who play soccer there. The next total of 22 there are the total of people who do not play soccer. There are 19 people on that top row that play cricket and there are a total of 43 people in that second row that do not play cricket. So whether you add up these two to get your number here or add up these two, you should get the same number, otherwise uh, you're doing something wrong. <laughs> so you get 62 altogether in this section here, and that's where we would look to answer a question uh, of how many students were surveyed altogether. 62 students surveyed altogether. So they're just some total uh, totals um, of the co columns and the rows there. That'll help us in our future questions as well. These are typical, the next part, uh, next sections are typical of questions you get in this in this topic how many students play at least one sport so if you have a think about it um, this is the system we could use here and our totals might be helpful at least one sport will equal the total number of students minus the number of students who don't play either sport so um, can you see the section where we they don't play either sport I'll get you to have a look at that now so at least one sport. Now the total students was the answer to the previous question. How many students were surveyed? 62. Uh, now, people who don't play either of these two sports, this is in the column of do not play soccer, and this is in the row do not play cricket. So you can see that that 15 is the number we're going to be using next. So we'll subtract that from the total, because everyone else plays at least one sport, if not two. Uh, so we get at least one sport of, the, of these two. Uh, 47 students play at least one of these two sports. Uh, now we could um, we could have also added these up. Uh, we did it by taking the total and taking away the category that didn't apply. We could also get the same answer by adding 12 and 7 and 28 and we'd get 47 as well. So there are two different ways we could answer that question. Alright, of the students who play cricket, now I'll show you this a special technique we're using for these types of questions. Of the students who play cricket, what fraction also play soccer? So it's not talking about all the students here, only a certain section of them, so let's be really careful with it. First thing to do is to circle the first mentioned idea, because they're, they're the students that we're talking about in this, the rest of this question. So of the students who play cricket, can you see which section is just dealing with the students who play cricket? I'm going to circle or uh, at least 
put a border around just the people who play cricket because the question isn't asking about all the rest of them. So we've done that. Circle the first mentioned idea there. I might have to do it for the next bit as well. Let me replay that. <laughs> all right, we circle the people who just play cricket. Now we're going to make a fraction out of the second bit. What fraction also plays soccer? Okay, so just, we're just looking at this top row here. What fraction also plays soccer? So can you see that uh, the total number of people who play cricket is 19 and the people who play cricket but also play soccer are 12. So we get two numbers there, the 12 and the 19. We're going to make a fraction out of that. Now these are normal fractions that get uh, created in these types of questions. A normal way of doing fractions is small number on the top and the big number on the bottom. So we're going to just circle the 12 and the 19 because they're the two numbers we highlighted from the previous slides. And uh, we're going to put also play soccer, that's the second idea on top, and the total cricket uh, number on bottom because it's saying out of the students who play cricket. Now this is out of. When you do an out of sort of uh, fraction, the bottom number is the out of. You know, if you get uh, 31 out of 40 um, in a test, the 40 goes on the bottom, doesn't it? So we make a fraction out of that. The two numbers we were talking about, I'll circle again, 12 and the 19 we uh, focused in on. Uh, 12 over 19 is our fraction. So, uh, interesting idea there. We just want to focus on a certain section of this, so we'll circle that first, and then we're looking at two numbers that we are focusing in on and making a fraction out of that in a normal sort of a way. Small number on top, big number on the bottom. So I like the way of uh, it focusing our attention on just the first thing that's mentioned, because they're the only students that we're considering in this particular part of the question. All right, now another variation here is, of the students who play soccer, what percentage do not play cricket? Now, can you see which section of our two-way table here is talking about just the students who play soccer? Have a stare at it. So instead of going across a row here, I'm going to circle a column. They're just the students we're talking about. What percentage do not play cricket? Now, don't worry about the percentage just now because we can easily go from a fraction to a percentage. Let's worry about getting a fraction first. So here are the steps. We'll circle the first mentioned idea, and I'll do that quickly again. First mentioned idea is out of the students who play soccer. So we're just talking about that first uh, column there. Circle that, then make a fraction out of the items we're talking about. Now, the two items we're talking about are people who play soccer, so that's got a total, and the people who do not play cricket. Can you see which number is the people who do not play cricket? That's the 28 there. They play soccer, but they do not play cricket. So that's our number we're going to make a fraction out of. So we're going to, on the next slide, we're going to put, uh, put that into a 28 over 40 situation, and we'll worry about turning that into a percentage after that. So we make a fraction. Do not play cricket over the total of the soccer. They're the two numbers we're talking about, 28 and 40, and remember we circled that whole column to focus in on that. So we've made a fraction, now the question asks us to make a percent. So you'll remember from your earlier studies that to go from a fraction to a percent, we just multiply that by 100 and we turn that fraction into a percent. So of the students who play soccer, 70% of them do not play cricket. And we've answered the question quite nicely there. But uh, let me recap the steps here. Any, any one of these uh, trickier questions on two-way tables, best to circle the idea that they're talking about, the first idea, then have a look at the second idea, do not play cricket. We uh, want to get a, num a pair of numbers there that will turn into a fraction and uh, the rest of it works out quite nicely. So the good thing about two-way tables and the questions you get, they're very similar. Uh, so we just look very carefully for the items we're looking for, make a fraction out of it and if we needed to, for us to get a percent, we'll just times it by 100. So I hope that helps. Uh, it can be tricky, but um, give yourself some time to absorb exactly what uh, the different numbers represent, the different categories they represent, and get some totals happening. That helped us in the question. And uh, draw all over the question paper if you get one in a, in a test, because um, that helps uh, you to focus on just the numbers that you asked about. All right, that's all about two-way tables. I hope that uh, is of some assistance for you. PeterBlakeMaths.com, and I'll catch you next time for some more great math videos. See you next time. Bye.